Hello everybody. I've had a request from a subscriber to show them how it is possible to make the topping for a cupcake, you know, the spiral uh, cream or whatever on top of a cupcake. Well, it's an inter interesting academic exercise. It's not exactly what Design Spark Mechanical is designed to do, but uh, I'm going to give it a try. I've, I've got one idea in me, in me, a noodle here. Uh, that might work. It's the sort of thing you can spend hours and days trying to play with. So I'm going to give uh, a germ of an idea that uh, everybody else can play with and try and make this uh, spiral conical type topping. So uh, here is uh, one idea of uh, how I've managed to achieve some sort of uh, spiral topping that could be put on a 3D cupcake. Right here we are on a new design. I will make it uh, first us nicely. Now we're going to uh, use this method, method that I've thought of off the top of my head. Uh, it's just an idea. It may work. Who knows? But it's something to be tried, I suppose. So we've now got a vertical line which is going to be an axis. And we're going to use a point here and we're going to make a radius um, of 20 millimeters. So it's going to be out here somewhere. Oh. Uh, right, so that's 10, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so that's 20 there, and we can now go to pull tool, P for pull, select our point, and we're going to Oh, the P didn't seem to work. Anyway, we're going to have a point selected. We're going to rotate it around our axis. That axis. And we're going to revolve a helix. I don't some more suppose it matters for a cupcake, cupcake whether it's a right-handed cupcake or a left-handed I suppose. If you're left-handed, it might uh, be better for you. <laughs> well, right, okay. Um, now, we're going to make it a taper angle of 45 degrees. And the pitch I've got sketched out here. Uh, the pitch, I'm going to make it oh, 12 millimetres. Click on it until it's highlighted in blue, change to 12, return, and the height of the total thing, again, click till it turns to blue, the height of the whole thing I'm going to make 24, these are just guesses by the way, it's sort of educated guesses, now if we press return, this is what we, we get. Got this spiral tapering spiral helix. Now then, I would have preferred it if this got closer to. Maybe it's not tall enough. I'm gonna go back. Z. Go back to here, and I'm gonna make the height slightly higher. Say 28, and see what happens. Hmm. Right, I want this back again. Uh, P 
which 12 mil. I'm going to make that 30. Return. Still nowhere near enough. Control Z. Pitch, I'm going to make that to what, 15. Return, that sets that. Click that, make it 30 again and see what happens. Return. So you see what I mean, we've got to play around with this until we get what we want. I'm just going to stick with that and see how it actually turns out. Because now what we have to do is the select tool and then find the very end of this helix there. Press K for sketch plane and that's putting a sketch plane at right angles to the end of that spiral there. Now we're going to draw our piping section onto there. So we'll square it up, bring it nearest a bit and I'm just going to draw a rough shape on here it's going to be by no means perfect so we'll start there and do oh escape chose the wrong tool what's going to be the best tool here I think I'll use a hex on the end draw a hex Uh, I'm going to draw two. This is just a sort of method. Wait a minute. Then straight line. Somehow I don't think this is going to be quite right, but anyway, it'll show the principle of what we're driving at. So now, P for pull, and well, we've got this star shape. So we've got the pull tool, we select. Our star, we're going to sweep it on an arc, and this is of course going to be our arc, and we select the full pull. Now as I said, this needs to go around so it goes to a peak at the top. But this is going to be our principle. Uh, two things, it's not meeting at the top and the star is not big enough. There's too much gap. Too much gap between the spirals. It's going to be something of a compromise because I think that if we're not careful, if we make this very big, one spiral will interfere with the other spiral and it will object, the program will object and you'll find that it will not uh, perform the spiral but tell you what, we'll go, we'll go back go back to, to there now we'll select the pull tool tool and scale body. Choose a place where you want to scale it from which is there and we'll type we'll make it one point one and a half times bigger. Wait a minute. I didn't Something 
links. I think we'll have to right, we'll try that now. Find the point on it. Ah, we've got our our also now 1.5. Yes, we've got 1.5 return. There we go. So we'll try that. And now we're going to sweep it along an arc, pick the trajectory, which is that, and then sweep it all the way. And we're getting somewhere near it. We still can make it a bit bigger. Look, we've got a fair gap here. Depending on how spiky you make this thing, you'll probably get these things to be closer. So I think we can make this even bigger. We'll go back. Right. Now instead of 1.5, we'll go to 2. 2. Okay, we'll try that. So we we'll still sneak a little bit, but not much more. We've got a gap in here. But how is that looking like a, a cupcake, cupcake top? Yeah, we really do need a bit more at the top. And of course, there comes another problem of how to make it finish off here. You want it tapering to a point. So I haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. We could maybe pull it, so if we select that, pull it, is it, is it going to pull? Yeah, it's pulling. Ah. <laughs> Oops. Aye. Wait a minute. Control Z. Right, we've selected that now. If we select the edge as well, double click. Now we're trying to pull it, it should pull straight off from the edge. Yes. Okay, I've got that now then. Just select this edge, double click it, and I'll try again, double click, right. Now then, we've got, um, we'll, cho we'll choose a, a straight chamfer. Now this is, we'll try half, to, well we'll try, choose one and see what one does. Ah. Two. Uh-huh. Two point five. We'll get nearer to a point here. Look, we've got an arrow here coming down which could help us try and drag that down. What 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 happens? Well there you go. Gone too far. Failed to create arrow. Oh, Well, wow. that's sort of a point, isn't it? Well, I suppose you could play endlessly with this. And you might want to change the colour, of course. So what you do there is go to display. You want to select your solid. 
there and there's all sorts of colours unfortunately you can't put a texture on I don't think but you can choose a colour and up here we've got the rendering style so we've got metallic plastic or brushed hatched and the finished brushed I don't think that's going to work very much according to the image I've been sent it's a sort of a, a matte white plastic might uh, might do it and then the finish matte suppose we change it to white or near white choose the solid um, what would it look like mm -hmm. well remember of course we're using an engineering card program to do something that really that it's not designed to do this is very much an organic problem rather than an engineering problem but it really just goes to show the versatility of it and that can with a bit of ingenuity lend itself to all sorts of weird and wonderful ideas so I think I'm just going to leave it at that oh there's one thing I did discover that if you wanted a bit more organic why not uh, blend two together so if we choose that solid there and go back to design and the move tool if we just sort of hold the control key and drag up we get another one blending within the first one so you get more of a haphazard and look they are in, inter, interacting together so you're getting more of a an inorganic feel with it so uh, I think that's something to be tried experiment to your heart's desire I'm going to leave it at that if I think of another way of doing this I might do another video so have a little look at that guys and girls and enjoy have fun bye